Hello and the very warmest of virtual welcomes to you all to what is one of the most important dates in the culinary calendar and possibly the only event that could lift the mood of the nation now that Captain Tom is no longer walking around his garden, the Nestle Professional Top Door 2020. Today is results day, beaming to you from the home of some of the country's most delicious delights. Without this building behind me, you couldn't take a break with a Kit Kat. Without this place, you couldn't enjoy it with the smoothest cup of coffee known to man. Thank you, Nescafe. And at the heart of this no expense fed broadcast are our very own cast of culinary love islanders, the students and apprentices who've mugged off all the other hopefuls and made it through to the finals. It's been, for obvious reasons, a little different this year, but no less brilliant for it. Oh, and here's what's coming up. We meet all of this year's finalists by the magic of Zoom. Ciao. <laughs> we talk everything hospitality with Nestle Professional Managing Director, Katja Simmons. We come face to face with the challenges the finalists had to take on. And there won't be a dry eye in the house when we say goodbye to this year's competition. Yes, we're packing loads of seriously good stuff into a very short space of time. It'll be intense, emotional, and dreams will come true, not only for our lucky winners, but also for one of you watching on, as we'll be giving you the chance to become the proud owner of an espresso machine. Details to follow. And now this is the moment to join the Talk Door conversation. You'll need to be at your multitasking best watching this, while at the same time posting and hashtagging as though your lives depended on it. And with the vital bits of info you require, it's over to our student finalist, Taylor. Make sure to head over to Nestle Socials on Facebook and Instagram at Nestle Talk Door and follow the journey with us and see what we've all been up to using the hashtags Talkdoor Digital and Talkdoor 2020. Thank you, Taylor, greatly appreciated. And if it doesn't work out in the world of hospitality, the world of broadcasting awaits. But just put down those smartphones for another couple of minutes before you get going with all that stuff because we are now gonna give an enormous, warm, humongous welcome to the earth mother of Nestle professional Talkdoor, the managing director, Katja Simmons. <laughs> Catch it's great to see you and it's great that we're here discussing Talk Door because bearing in mind we've had a global pandemic, many competitions, events, occasions have had to be scuppered. Uh, of course, for obvious reasons, our thoughts go out to all those who've suffered. But why did you think it was so important that this competition went ahead, come what may? I have to say that the Talk Door has already a very long standing history and we're all aware it's an extremely difficult year for hospitality. So we were not even considering not running it. The bigger question is how do we make it relevant? How do we make sure that we actually support our talents in hospitality and we give them relevant skills? Therefore, we just sat down as a team and, and try to understand and mobilize all our resources to make sure that we elevate to an absolutely new level. Well, I think it's greatly appreciated and it's sort of the first almost 100% digital competition we've had, but actually Top Door was a, a bit digital anyway, wasn't it? Absolutely, we were already trying to be ahead of the game and we already moved part of the Talk Door challenges and part of the journey into the digital world, but obviously the new environment pushed us even further and hopefully we brought the great experience to our contestants and great knowledge. One of the great things about the competition going digital is that you could kind of follow this, the, the finalists along the way. Uh, so what was your particular highlight? I think the biggest find and the biggest warm moment for me was actually that we had a chance to look at their life and they were in their authentic environment and they were thinking of how do I actually build a business case in the real life, not just in the environment they were brought for this particular event. So I think this really seeing them, who they are and trying to challenge and bring their business case together was for me the one of the biggest moments of this competition. Well, Katja, thank you for joining us. Socially distanced crew, big round of applause for Katja. <laughs> And as Katia goes off to a very important office up in the sky, we ought to move on because stage one en route to top door greatness was the digital entry. Then the chosen ones, both front and back of house, went through to the regional heats where they started battling it out all around the UK for a place in the finals. If you have any passion inside you, a competition is going to bring it to the surface. You've got to be with other people competing, you know. It is a wonderful feeling and, and it's very creative. It's a creative process cooking after all. The top door regional heats took place earlier in the year in Glasgow, Birmingham, Nestle head office at Gatwick and central London. Student and apprentice competitors undertook masterclasses from the front of house and back of house judges. 
the best part about being here is that you have a lot of professional people who have been teaching you, who have been observing you, what great experience to learn from them. And the challenge was set. Chefs had to cook a two-course vegetarian meal. It's the challenge of trying to get egg covers done in an hour. And waiters had to offer guests the ultimate front of house experience, together with a perfectly made cocktail. There was everything to play for, but only a select few could make it through to this year's Grand Finals. This industry is all about confidence, isn't it? It's like anything, you know. They go away, they think they've, they've done a good job, and um, yeah, man, it's huge. They can feed off that and they can go forward and hopefully progress. I never knew that this many people were trying to become chefs and front of our staff. Like, it, it shocked me, so that's what's impressed me, really. Everyone's smiling, everyone's enjoying it, and it's just. That just shows that they're enjoying it and they're having fun. Well, I hope so anyway. <laughs> I reckon the future Gordon Ramsay is probably in that kitchen right now. If I'm able to go to the finals, I'll be able to like enhance my skills a bit more. Yeah, it was quite stressful, but we got there in the end. <laughs> yes, yeah, stressful it may be, but as long as you get there in the end, that's all that matters. That's how the cream of the crop was selected and we found our Top Door 2020 finalists. And very shortly, we'll be announcing the four from that extremely talented bunch who've been chosen as this year's winners. Two front of house, a student and an apprentice, and two back of house, also a student and an apprentice. And this is properly exciting. In a few moments, we'll be speaking to our finalists thanks to the awesome power of the Nestle Professional Satellite that's orbiting above us as we speak. But just before we do that, we have to thank all the amazing partners that have got involved in this year's competition. They know who they are, and now so do you, thanks to our graphics department who've magically photoshopped them on the screen right before our very eyes. To all the partners, you are extraordinary. Top Door is always a great team effort. And here is Nestle Top Door's Commander-in-Chief, Camilla Cabral, with a very special message. Nestle Professional Talk Door have been working with industry partners for a number of years. They are fundamental to help us shape in the competition, providing students and apprentices with skills and insights. If you want to become a partner for next year competition and support the next generation, please get in touch. And it's also thanks to the generosity of our partners and Nestle Professional that this year's winners will be enjoying some very special prizes. Feast your eyes on those beauties. And all our colleges won't be disappointed either as they'll be receiving generous grants from the Savoy Educational Trust. And don't forget, before we bid farewell, at the end of this whole wonderful thing, I'll let you know how one of you could be getting your hands on a sparkly new Nespresso machine. Uh, now, of course, a competition needs competitors to give those amazing prizes to. And by the magic of Zoom, there they all are. What a sight. Great to see you all. Uh, we'll be meeting and announcing our front of house apprentice winner in a matter of minutes. This is exciting times. But before we do that, let's turn back the clock again, this time to day one of the finals, which was all about coffee. The exercise that we did was a professional scoring exercise that you would have in the industry. So to give them an understanding of how we do quality control, how we test the quality. Putting the water on it so you can see how it builds a crust, then actually doing the whole smell, the aroma. Does it smell like damp socks? Is it rough? Is it sweet? Is it dull? Is it bright? Floral and all that. And then trying to identify everything that's in that coffee, so all the organolytics and everything that you get. Similar to wine, it's a very similar experience, it's just a bit more complex. And give them a bit of an insight into an industry that maybe they haven't seen before. I am suggesting a slurp off. Very good, but I think I'm going to put a sound effect on that. It was great to see just how close they were to uh, my scores and the actual score that that coffee had. You really do notice the difference between more floral ones, more nutty ones. It's uh, it's opened um, opened me up to try and more of them in the future. And some of the flavour notes that they come up with were even new to me. The theme of these brand new entrepreneurs. It's just great to see people at the very start of their of their careers and, and how uh, we as individuals can inspire them to do that and follow their dreams. I learned a ton of new skills. I learned how to taste coffee um, and just, yeah, just a bunch of new skills that I thought that I would never learn.
Yes, it's one incredible learning curve, this competition, and there's no doubt that we've got some champion, world champion slurpers amongst our finalists this year. And let's say hello to our first group of finalists, everybody. This is very exciting. Please welcome the Apprentice Front of House finalist 2020. <laughs> and we're going to say hello to Chelsea first. I understand that you're a, you're a very uh, active family. You're very fit and healthy, but were, were you tested physically and mentally throughout the course of the finals? Yes, definitely. There was definitely some um, early mornings and long nights, uh, very last minute dot com in doing some, some of the things, but um, it clearly paid off to do some of those late nights and early mornings. Um, so yeah, it definitely was a test. There's nothing wrong with last minute dot com if you get there in the end. So great to see you, Chelsea. Let's say hello to Chiro. Hello, Chiro. Ciao. <laughs> and you, you've come from originally San Severino near Rome and you've ended up in Wokingham. You've ended up in this competition. How did that all happen? So um, I was following the uh, hospitality course provided with the EAT training. And my trainer suggested me to take uh, part in the competition. So I give it a go. Tegan, you're an apprentice at Mallory Court. Well done on making it to the finals of Top Door 2020. How have you enjoyed your experience? Not everything has just gone above and beyond. Um, I've learned a lot as well. And it's just been quite nice meeting people that are like me that want a career in hospitality. Imagine you've come all the way from Egypt to this country and you've made it into the Nestle Top Door finals. How have you found that, that whole journey from, from where you were to where you are now? Only one word, perfect. It will be much, much better if it was face to face, but uh, we have to blame COVID-19 for that. But look, well done to all of you, all four of you. Uh, just before we have the big reveal, Katja Simmons, who is the managing director of Nestle Professional, is gonna make the big announcement. But just before we find out who has won it, let's hear from Judge Robert Smith about why they've chosen one of you as the winner. With this competitor, we were really impressed with their passion, their commitment and their attention to detail. And we know they worked some very long hours to ensure that they had the absolute perfect business plan. And the Talk Door 2020 Front of House Apprentice winner is... Chelsea Robinson. Oh my God! How does it feel to have won the first trophy in the Nestle Professional Top Door 2020. I'm very, very surprised. Um, but yeah, I'm happy that it um, all came together and it paid off for me in the end. Um, but yeah, I'm really shocked and wasn't expecting it at all. Well, congratulations to all of you, uh, but particularly well done to Chelsea, everybody. Well done to Chelsea. No doubt they'll be celebrating the cross keys in Stowe. Now, before we meet our front of house students, we're going to see what the finalists got up to at stage two of the competition. In charge of this bit was the Wine and Spirit Education Trust. Hi, so it's Wednesday morning, just getting ready for the spirits course. A little bit nervous about it, but just hoping it goes all right, to be honest. The WSET Level 1 Spirits course is an opportunity for the finalists to gain unique experience in the study of spirits and it's also a chance to gain a qualification that is recognised globally. For me, these courses are all about flavour. They're about understanding flavour, albeit in spirits, and they're all interested in flavour, whether they're front of house or back of house. What really intrigues me is kind of where flavours come from in spirits and about understanding the production variables and how it's influenced style and flavour that you find in the glass, and they can all appreciate that. The way I was testing the alcohol is different from just having a drink. So you know what's behind the alcohol, the aroma, the flavor, the sweetness, the percentage of the alcohol. I had no idea that cognac was so complicated, that there were so many different types of tequila. For me, tequila was just one and it was disgusting. But uh. <laughs> The more work we can do with young apprentices um, from back of house or from front of house, within catering colleges and other educational um, institutions, then the better. I mean, it's a really good time for us to get involved with these individuals. We had the WSET exam today, which I think went really well. I'm really happy with the questions and how I answered them. So hopefully that'll be a pass and that'll be something that I can add onto my CV. One of the essential roles Top Door plays is to ensure that all the competitors have the opportunity to improve their skills for their future careers. 
Another great top door string added to the bow of our finalists, and actually not all of them who appeared to love tequila. Uh, it's particularly Jack, actually, an aggressive dislike of tequila. Anyway, let's now meet uh, some more of our finalists. Everybody, a big round of applause for our front of house students. <laughs> Welcome to you all. Lovely waving there. Abby, we're going to talk to you first from the University College of Birmingham. You look like you've absolutely loved the experience, Abby. Uh, what, what did you love most about it? It was meeting different people that were like older than me and I could gain knowledge off it almost and maybe even share some with them. That was probably the best thing because like in hospitality, it's really hard being 18 and still being in hospitality and people can't like look down at you because you've only done two years max, but you weren't treated younger in the competition and that's what I enjoyed. Actually, just for you watching at home, you need to know this, that Abia has a tortoise called Leonardo who was captured by her dog, Junior, I think I'm right in saying, went missing in action for two or three days. Junior buried the dog three feet under, I mean, buried the tortoise three feet under, and it survived. That's a miracle in itself, Abby. There we go, look, there he is. And there's the tortoise. <laughs> Hello there, Leonardo. We're now gonna move on to Alex, who's from the city of Glasgow College. Alex in Dumfries, who lives on a beef and sheep farm. I know that you were a former professional footballer with Kilmarnock and Queen of the South. So if I gave you the option, of lifting the trophy, the World Cup trophy for Scotland, or winning the trophy today, which one would you take? Oh, I don't think Scotland are getting to the World Cup, never mind winning it anytime soon. Um, but definitely winning the trophy today, yeah. I'm really, really feeling confident, and you know, I put my all into this, uh, so, so hopefully I can bring it home. You're bang on message, Alex. Now, so Leia, you're from the North Hertfordshire College. So what's been the highlight of your, your top door? I think it was just the, all, the overall experience of it like meeting new people and just doing things that I never thought I could do or like that I've never done before and just learning new things. Well, look, your click and collect business uh, was a cocktail click and collect business. Your hobby was listed as making cocktails. So if you won this trophy, what cocktail would you responsibly celebrate with? A sex on the beach. Right. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but Leah, thank you very much for, for raising the heckles of the audience watching on uh, this live presentation. Uh, let's move on to Sophie. You're representing Edinburgh College. How have you enjoyed your experience? There's not enough words in the like English dictionary to describe the week and the final that we've had because it is truly second to none. I'm so glad and so um, passionate about sharing people about this competition because I don't think enough people know what Talk Door really does offer and I'm so glad that I got to be a part of it. But yeah, I'm I'm just blown away by the support and the everything that Talk Door has done. Finally, Taylor uh, from Farnborough College. Hello, Taylor. What have you got out of this experience as, as a person, on a personal level? There were so many experiences, so many different challenges, which um, have given me different opportunities and I've explored different areas. My confidence, I've, I've gained confidence doing all these challenges, especially socially which is great for my career ahead. I've got a platform now uh, for my future career. I've got to say this again, I'm sounding like a broken record, but to get this far is amazing. So well done to all of you. But as you know, one of you does have to win the trophy. The judges have to make what is, I always think, almost an impossible decision. But just before Katya does make the announcement, here is Alison Tafs, one of the judges, with her views and her thoughts on our winner. So this winner had three great strengths. First of all, complete enthusiasm the whole way through the competition process. Secondly, great commitment to what they were doing and great focus around producing, in the end, a really solid piece of work. Thirdly, an absolute grasp of their surroundings, of the local produce around them, right from the start, understanding that they could tap into their local area and their local products, and that was really impressive. And the Talk Door 2020 front of house student winner is Alex Dick. Oh, wow. oh, thank you so much. How does it feel to have got your hands on a Nestle Talk Door title? I put my all into it and so grateful uh, it paid off in the end. Well done to all of you, but particularly well done to Alex. 
be revealing our apprentice and student chef winners imminently, but as you'll have gathered, this year's competition has been a little different to normal for obvious reasons. A bit of digital magic was required when we were all locked up, and so it was felt, in keeping with the times, that a digital task would be a good fit. Now, this element of the finals was overseen by the media mogul of Top Door, Robert Smith, our very own digital guru, and believe you me, he is not an easy guru to please. Uh, but this was another serious test and another invaluable experience. I think the aim of this challenge is to help the competitors understand the important role social media plays in promoting themselves and a business. This is about bringing their top door journey and business plan to life. Always been a bit scared of putting myself out there and um, showing my personality. It's been great fun. I've learned a lot of marketing skills, so how to market myself as a business, as a person, as a chef. As well as being creative on social media, the finalists were also given the task of conducting a Zoom interview with someone closely associated with Top Door. This is definitely great learning and insight for their career. This wasn't in the free interview. Three words, why do I love being a chef? It did help the competitors with their confidence, actually. They had to sort of prepare themselves, think about things. So I interviewed Julia and me and her had a great like chat and we got on really well and the interview went really well. I thought it was really good because my young lady had obviously done quite a lot of preparation. She was incredibly nervous to start with. So we got through that and, it, and we had a really good chat in the end. And it so happened she's at college quite near me. So I thought when once the college is open, I will actually go and see her and see if there's anything we can do to help her advance her. So she went on a journey in a way. Yeah, I thought it was a really good way of um, pro progressing the competition. I kind of didn't really like taking selfies and now taking like 10 a day and it's really helped my confidence. I gained so much knowledge only for researching on uh, recipes to upload, how to make everything look perfect, you know. Research is the most important skill, I believe, for SF and for everybody. I don't know what I expected, but it wasn't interviewing um, the managing director of Nestle. Ah! Yes, Alex had to interview the uh, managing director of Nurse Day Professional uh, as well as me. It's a terrifying experience. Actually, Katya, she's lovely, of course, and we'll be hearing from Katya in a moment. But first, let's meet everybody. Big fanfare. Go as wild as you dare for our back of house students. <laughs> and first up, let's say hello to Erica from Derby University. Erica, hello to you. What did you love the most about this competition? Seeing everything come together at the end of the week and all the dishes and also with the Oli app and people loving what I produced really gave me the drive, you know what I mean? Like it gave me really like the excitement, you know? So that was like my biggest highlight of this school competition. Uh, let's talk to Catherine representing Kendall College, but you've also had a wonderful experience, I think, during the Nestle Talk Door. What has been the highlight for you, Catherine? I think my highlight uh, of the Talk Door was sort of the end of the finals week and seeing everything I'd done come together with the and food and the business plan because it all seemed a lot to do within a week but somehow I ended up with you know products and a business plan that I was happy with so I was quite proud of that and that was pretty my highlight. Let's move on to Vasilios who's there in his kitchen with all his pots and pans looks very impressive uh, and great to have you representing the city of Glasgow College you've got a rich history in this competition what have you most enjoyed about the the whole top door journey? I learned a lot around uh, social media, how to promote myself, how to believe in myself, actually, you know. Uh, research, I learned how to research properly, because imagine even uh, the most easiest challenge that we may have, uh, I had to make research for that, you know, in order to be in the brief, let's say. And uh, of course, uh, the language is a barrier for me. You know, I'm a little bit slower because technically I do everything in two different languages in my head, you know. But I really enjoy that and I feel like a winner, you know. I, I didn't even care about today, to be honest. Well, it's great to hear from you today. Uh, and I've got to say this, everybody, just getting to this stage of the competition is an incredible feat. 
but I'm afraid one of you does have to win. And just before Katya makes the big announcement, let's hear from Judge Ruth Hansom on why one of you has won this trophy. So I just want to say firstly, congratulations to you all for getting this far. You've done absolutely amazing. I really enjoyed the week judging you all. But, you know, there was one clear winner for me. They really stood out. They were really passionate from the beginning, but also professional. And they really got behind their idea and made me feel like I could believe in what they were doing when they were presenting. So you've all been amazing, but there can only be one winner. So. And the Talk Door 2020 Back of House student winner is... Catherine Eltham. Wow. <laughs> Well, well done to all of you, as I said, but particularly well done to Catherine. How does it feel to, to have won the trophy? It's really nice to have something to show for this year. And, you know, despite what's gone on, I, I feel proud of myself. It's hoping at least a great things for you and all your fellow finalists in the future. Cue the applause. Now, just before we reveal who's won the last award, the Back of House Apprentice of the Year, we need to see how our elite platoon of finalists got on with their final task. Their entrepreneurial instincts were put to the test in this last challenge as they were asked to create a click and collect business plan that reacted to the global pandemic. From coughable cocktails to the perfect tasting meal, it was time to face the COVID crisis head on and come up with a positive plan for hospitality. On the first day of the business challenge, the finalists faced the judges and were tasked with creating a virtual click and collect business idea that could show off their front of house, back of house and marketing skills to perfection. This is your time to think about the current situation that the world's in, how business can continue and um, how you can do it in your way, looking at different trends, looking at styles and how really you're going to put everything together. The competitors also needed to understand the importance of producing a well-balanced and sustainable menu and business as part of their plan. The students and the apprentices are going to have to be very aware that nutrition, health and wellness in a commercial setting is absolutely vital. And the pressure is not just coming from policy makers, um, it's also coming from the consumer. Health and wellness is becoming much higher on consumers' agendas. It's something they're really looking for. and more and more wanting to see from businesses. So I think for long-term sustainability, you really need to be embracing nutrition. The pressure was on, and now the finalists had to come up with their plan and get to grips with the vital business details. I have been really busy tonight, finishing my business plan and finalising everything, trying to cost all my ingredients as well. Um, that took me a lot longer than I was expecting. Would the competitors understand the important business elements needed to ensure they had a realistic and potentially profitable concept? It's been fun to create something like a business that I could possibly uh, have when I'm older. I want the food to be sustainable, I want it to be healthy, I want it to be local, I want to also suit the local taste. Doing the business challenge, it's been actually quite interesting because I sort of thought of putting a plan of action in the next like five years or so to sort of start doing a business or even sort of work my way up to that direction but it's been good to sort of actually put that mindset on and say that you know what it doesn't necessarily have to be within five years it can be now. The problem I'm having at the minute is that I've got too many ideas and not enough time. I'm gonna go to the fish mongers to get my fish tomorrow at 4 a.m. in the morning so this is how determined I am to make it in the talk door. You know I think I deserve an early night and we'll see you in the morning, I guess. Um, yeah, thank you. Yes, it's not for the faint heart of this competition. Late nights, early mornings. The one thing I really took from that video is the, the mantelpiece in James Tanner's stately home. He pretends he's a man of the people, but he doesn't fool me. Anyway, let's now meet some more of uh, the stars of our show and say a big warm welcome to the Back of House Apprentices. Hello to you, Fergus. Now, you're an apprentice at the Polecat Inn in Buckinghamshire, and you have a dog called Gizmo, and I don't think those two would get on. But I heard you talking about your, your Nestle Top Door experience. And I, I, what have you got out of it? What's the best thing you've learned over the, over the whole process? Um, overall, I think I learned a lot about uh, how to kind of market myself on Instagram. Um, a lot more of online, uh, how to make myself more present online. Um, food photography as well 
uh, how to take better photos. Uh, and the other thing I found out about you is you're into, you're into your vinyls. Uh, you love your 60s music. You love your psychedelic 60s music. So if there had to be a soundtrack to your Talk Door experience, what would that soundtrack be? So it'd probably be uh, Eight Miles High by The Birds. Um, I think it's just a, it's a great song. It's got a really nice upbeat moods that just kind of it fit the tone of the Talk Door experience. Thank you, Fergus. Good stuff. Now, just before we speak to Jack and Lily, uh, the finalists face the ultimate test of their business plan by seeing whether members of the public actually wanted to place an order. The final day of the challenge, and it was time to get prepared, come rain or shine. These blackberries and plums are a good example of the local produce that we have to us where I live in Kent. Because this fruit's wild, I can pick them for free, so that brings the cost of my food down as well. Have the competitors come up with the right business ideas? I've got quite a cool idea, I think first thing that popped into my head when they said click and collect, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Using the world's first food sharing app, Olio, the finalists have an opportunity to share their products with the local community, whilst this being an opportunity to help the competitors understand the importance of food waste. It will help, I think, um, the competitors to always think in terms of sustainability and the impact that their choices has on the, on the environment in terms of the products that they might source or the products that they might use and how to also ensure that, uh, that there's no food waste at the end of the day, especially food that is still edible and, and, and fit for consumption. The competitors had a limited amount of time to start creating their food and cocktail ideas and upload their listings to Olio. Just finished the chutney, as you can see here. The only real last cooking thing to do, pickle cucumber. One minute countdown. It's all listed on the Olio app and I've got two arrangements already sorted which is great. Yeah, just waiting for people to come collect. I've got a couple people that have ordered it so far so yeah it's gonna be good. Just delivered my first Olio package. They looked quite pleased. Hope they give it quite a good review. And finally the finalists face the judges to present their business plan and complete their top door business challenge task. So imagine us that we're, we're going to invest in your business. Once we finish that presentation, would I want to back you and would I want to join you on that journey um, in the business that you're presenting to us? Okay, so presentations, five minutes. Just had a run through. Don't know I can keep it under 10 minutes. We're just waiting now to show our presentation. We're really nervous for that because we've been working on it since Monday. So hopefully all goes well. So that's it, the end of my Nestle journey. Um, I've just presented my business plan. I actually think it went really well. Um, I did speak quite fast there, that was the only thing, but I have a tendency to do that anyway. Those on Olio that have messaged me to come and pick up the cocktails, thank you. Yeah, that was another challenge where the finalists had to put their heart and soul into the experience and forget Amazon, forget Ocado, I'm now an Olio man, through and through. Uh, let's talk to Lily. Now, Lily loved the experience so much last year. She's come back for more, everybody. Uh, Lily came from Boodles. She's now working at the bakery restaurant. Uh, she started a business during lockdown, a cake business, which was very successful. Great to see you again, Lily. What, why did you want to come back for more? Because I was in the final last year and I saw all the um, challenges and opportunities that were just amazing. I wanted to come back this year and have another go and see what was to offer this year. Now, there's another thing you need to know about Lily, everybody, is that Lily is going out with Jack. Uh, now, that is big news, everybody, to use who, don't, who aren't on the inside. Um, Jack, I'm assuming you're still going out with Lily, otherwise this is really awkward. Um, <laughs> I really hope you are. Uh, you are. Good, good. That's fantastic. Now, now just Jack's backstory. He's uh, been an apprentice at the East India Club. Very fancy. He's got an internship at the Ritz. He's going on a ski season. So you've got a master plan. Where do you hope the final destination will be, Jack? Uh, the final destination for me is to, to be head chef in my own restaurant or to be head chef of a big hotel in London. And I'm not going to stop until I get there uh, because it's a big aspiration of mine and I've wanted it for as long as I can remember being a chef. So 
yeah. Well, good luck with that. Now, there's one thing we do have to address. It's a, it's a rather awkward topic. Both you and Lily want to win this award, uh, as does, uh, of course, uh, uh, Fergus, but only one of you can. So if Lily wins this award and you don't, will, will this put a strain on your relationship, do you think? Both very supportive of each other and uh, we want the best success for each other. And uh, if either of us were to win this competition, um, we would be going from strength to strength um supporting each other and if lily's to win it she'll support me and if i win it she'll support me yeah no we'll just support each other well, look, well done uh, to all of you for making it this far in the competition you've absolutely smashed it to do that but as you know only one of you can win the trophy and just before catcher makes the big announcement here is head judge james tanner on why one of you is going to lift this trophy the reason why this person was the winner of this year's Nestle Professional Talk Door is the way that they rose to the challenge, grasped all aspects of the competition and seriously delivered right across the board. It's a massive, massive well done. And the Talk Door 2020 Back of House Apprentice winner is Lily Stork. Oh my God, oh my God, that's amazing. You didn't manage it last year, but you've got your hands on the trophy this year. How does it feel? It feels really good. Um, I was really hoping that I was going to win. You know, I tried really hard this year and put everything into it. So it does feel really good, a big achievement. Amazing work. Congratulations. Get out in the world and show them what you can do. So there you have it. This year's Fab Four are fantastic winners of the very first digital Nestle professional Talk Door. Now, if you've been feeling a little left out of all this prize giving here and you want to have a crack at winning that very fancy Nespresso machine, all you need to do is find the prize giveaway post on the Top Door Instagram feed. So good luck with that. Whoever wins it will be the envy of the neighbourhood. Now, as you all know, the reason why the Nestle Professional Top Door is so vitally important is that it's all about supporting and showcasing the future talent of the hospitality industry. And in very unusual, and here's hoping not to be repeated circumstances, this year's competition has once again highlighted that there are some seriously gifted, uh, motivated and impressive people who want to be part of the industry. We need people like these guys more than ever, and we need you lot to shout about them on social media so others hear it and think, what's that all about? I want in. Thank you to everyone involved this year. You know who you are, and I think and hope you know you're greatly appreciated. But the biggest thank you goes to our students and apprentices for putting their hearts and souls into this competition. Uh, their passion and commitment has given us all a much needed shot of optimism. Thanks for watching. I hope you all keep safe and well. And we're going to leave you with a reminder of what the Nestle Professional Top Dog competition is all about. My word have you guys risen to the challenge. To have young talent like yourselves coming through and being so involved and so keen, it really does make me feel that the industry is in certain safe hands. You are all winners for being here, to have come to this point. You should be very, very proud of yourself. Talk Door Digital 2020 is one that is certainly going to go down in history, but thank you. All I want to say is thank you so much to Nestle for having a competition like this. It means so much to me um, and it's really good for future chefs and future front of house to have this platform and just to learn amazing skills with Nestle. Top Door for me has been an unforgettable, life-changing experience that is going to be a big stepping stone for my long career as a chef. met so many um, professionals in the industry and I can't wait to see what it will bring me in the future. I feel grateful because I saw myself getting stronger and more confident during the competition. And I just realized that I'm gonna miss it so much. My Tuck Door experience really has been amazing and from start to finish, and I think it's really given me some confidence that I never had before. The overall experience has been unforgettable and I'll remember it for forever. It's been such an amazing week, I'd recommend it to anyone. I can't wait to put in what I've learned into practice going forward in my career. What an experience. Take care and stay safe. Thank you, Nestle Talk Door. Thank you. I probably gave myself 
Uh, it's kind of wonky. <laughs> You're live on Zoom. Just making a sneaky drop of coffee. Hope it's Nescafe. <laughs> Make sure you follow the hashtags Top Door 2020 and Top Door Digital for more. Thank you very much. See you.